So in today's video, we are installing this Harbor Freight triple charger. It's $25. Looks something like this thing. And so I'm doing this because the truck sits forever. So we are going to permanently attach it to the fender and then hook it up to the battery. Probably just going to leave these clamps on it. Um, just for a simple fact that I have to put eyelets and cut everything off. But why when I can just clip it on? Works the same. It ain't going to fall off. So there I don't have, you know, this just laying in here. You know, wires running over top. So we're going to screw it down here. I'll get you a better view in a minute. And then we're going to run the wire through. And it's going to come out right in here. And it's just going to hang down. And so when you want to charge it, you just plug it in. Size how long of a screw to use here. An inch and a half and three quarters. I'm going to use the long ones and I'll just cut it off. So yeah, if your uh, vehicle sits for a while, keep it plugged in. These cars have parasitic draws, computers, radios, all that stuff. So, if you want your battery to have a longer shelf life, don't let it go dead. Especially in the winter time. Cold batteries don't work well. And if your battery gets frozen, good luck jump starting it. So if you keep it plugged in, you know, you don't have to worry about it. And on your power on your you know diesel trucks, you can just tie this into your block heater plug so when you plug your truck into the heater you also can charge it better. I have another video on that of our F-250 that we did that on. I was trying to get the cord length here.
And yes, you could just cut these off and wire them in directly to your battery. You know, and have the eyelids attached. But, you know, let's just say this thing has a meltdown. I can pop these off where if you attach it to your battery permanently like we did in the other one, what do you do? Rip the wires? So, this one just gets clamped over here. Maybe. I'm a little out of it on this video, guys. And gals. And it's windy. That this was kind of hanging around. And then this. I'm gonna try and shove it through. There's a big hole down here in my uh, marking lights. I would show it to you. I can't. Keep in mind, I don't have an OEM bumper. Your OEM bumper would be right here, so you couldn't do this easily like that. And then I'll just take this and I'll just zip tie it right here. And I'll get uh, another plug with that electric grease to put on it. So that way there doesn't get all corroded up. On top, I'm just going to take the big ball of wire and tidy it up for now because all of this is going to get redone at some point. Not today. Let's see, where did I have you? Eventually, once it's charged, these will all go red. They'll just stay in standby mode. If there was an issue, there'd be a false code. So, about it. Here's the mess of wires. And this one I wrapped around with coolant tank. And then this one is the one that goes through my grill. Terminal. There. And then there are a couple of zip ties. Plug. Do yourself a favor and do not forget to unplug this before you drive away. I know. I did, and it eventually unplugged after my extension cord finally ran out of length. Depending on your extension cord, that could be a minute. Mine's about 75 feet long, so I was all the way out of my driveway and into the street before I unhooked. So let's keep that in mind. But I got to do this on nut six. There's five more. Five more vehicles to do this on. There's a 
So we're gonna do one on Mom's, the other truck. I think it's like five more. But they fully charged. So just sit there now and just trickle charge for when needed. And like I said, I went and chopped them off. And yes, I know, I need new, you know, transmission lines and brake lines. I'm working on it. So yeah, that's pretty much all she wrote. Lights are red, fully charged, clips, tidied up wire for now, because like I said, I want to redo all this stuff, make all this, I know the sun's in a really bad spot, but redo all this mumbo jumbo in here, and that's it. So yeah, just another thing to note is, uh, you know, when you're in your house all snuggled up in your blankie, your poor battery outside is freezing its rear end off. So, you know, trying to keep batteries warm, charged up, you know, it does help. It allows your starting system to work so much better in the winter rather than you get that slow, hard start. You know, your batteries say it's not at the top shape. Well, at least with this plugged in, it'll have its best fighting chance to start it, especially if you're diesel powered, where glow plugs and all that stuff work extremely hard to get on the fire especially if it's not plugged in so you know just stuff to consider during the winter months to help the vehicle out to keep it less problematic you know this is you know assuming that you got you know the, the money the abilities all that stuff I mean I'm sure you can find somebody who can do it for you plus you know Make sure it's done properly because you know you can cause problems. You know, reverse polarity, you know, pinch wires, it's all bad. So just make sure you do a clean job. Like I said, I gotta clean all that up because this is just a project right now. You know, that thing needs, you know, shocks and rocker panels and a number of other things, but just sits for weeks on end and I've already put a second battery in it because of that reason. So I've been keeping a charger on it around the clock, but a 4 to 10 amp charger for trickle charging is kind of overkill. So that should be more than fine. It's just got an old school engine with a basic computer, so that should be fine. So that's all. So that'll be the trickle charging video to install in your vehicles for Harbor Freight. I do highly recommend doing this. Like I said, I gotta do this on like five or six more cars and trucks because it works out really well when they sit or in the winter time when it's, you know, fall's cold, fall's cold, we'll get there. And yeah, so thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.